Where were you when it all happened? So I play, I play for the Knights. I was on the field. It was like the last two minutes of the game. It was tied, uh, and everyone started freaking out in the crowds. I started running. I started running fast. Uh, all the guys in the field were running in different directions, and it was, it was just, it was chaos. I, I didn't know what to do. I was at the stadium. They were, they were playing hard that night. All of a sudden, just like that, like clap of thunder. I looked up. I didn't see anything. It's kind of boring. And then I did. What did you see? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to a restaurant? I can't say that I have, actually. Okay. You know how they, they carry the big plates, the things. Right. So it was like that, just floating in the sky. But beaming. It was, gosh, oh gosh, it was pretty. But terrifying. But it had like etchings in each corner, and it was a circle. So I had my binoculars. I was out in the woods. I was watching the game. All of a sudden, the ground opened up, and a giant red orb comes just out of the ground. So nothing in the sky, huh? There's. Nothing going on in the sky. Why, why would there be anything in the sky? It was a Friday night. We were at a football game. And it was just me and my friend Beth. And we were actually in the bathroom at the time. And everything went pitch black. Then I started you know, kind of screaming for her because, I don't know, I was freaked out. And nothing. Like, I heard nothing. And so then I kind of felt my way, like, over to the door and opened it to go back out. And it was, it was pitch black. Like, I could hear screams. It sounded like people were screaming. But it was muffled, like a wa like underwater maybe, like that kind of thing. Did you ever get to look around in the ship? I was on this table, uh, and I I waited quite some time because I I just felt I felt delirious in a way. Um, so I tried getting up. Uh, I just remember being really scared, and I just wanted to get out. So I tried to walk around, but no one, there was no one there, it was just silent. We often think of interaction as like, in senses like this, where you touch. I interacted with this thing in pretty much every way, except for touch. Yeah. It was like all the things I grew up watching on TV, it was like, you know those party scenes where it's just loud music. It was like something I've never, ever heard before. Uh, did you ever actually interact with any other life forms on the ship? Like you know the pterodactyls, but like it had, it had actual arms instead of the pterodactyls, and it had like a round face and normal legs. So it basically looked like a human. The moment I saw that thing in the sky, they spoke to me. Mm. What did they say? I really don't know at all. It was just like a bunch of bogus. <laughs> it took us like three years at least to actually figure out what the hell they were saying. Everything went just black and I passed out. So I'm in like a cylindrical tank of sorts and I look out and there are like little like fireflies everywhere on the outside of the tank. So I'm trying to piece together what's going on. That's when I realized I am being observed by a full host of creatures of some sort. That is when I began to think the word extraterrestrial. It was kind of gradual. When I woke up, there was just kind of some humming and I never met any of them or saw them, but I, I could definitely feel when they were close. So you never did see those beings? No, I'm still by now. I've been in a hurricane one time. It felt like that, but it was from every side. I had uh, I had woken up for the second time and just all the fear was gone. It was warm relaxing. 
Did you uh, build any relationships with anyone on on the ship? Did you find any of the other survivors? No. No. I didn't. It was just it was just me and the beings. There was one being in particular. There was a point where I, I asked it its name, um, but it uh, didn't. It didn't tell me kind of put a harness around me and pulled me out of the tank. And that's when I got to uh, meet George. That's when our, our friendship began to be more of a solid thing. See, a lot of people misunderstand extraterrestrial beings, but they can actually be kind of all right. So how long did it take you to really feel comfortable next to these uh, beings? Probably from day one. The second they yanked me out of that tank, and I met George. Man, we were uh, we were pretty tight. I don't know exactly how the time works in space, but we were on that ship for maybe a couple hundred years. They have a certain ritual. It's called the smashing of the bagels. I believe that is the rough translation from the. Language. Can we uh, can we get George in here? Come on, George. Come on, get in. I got you a spot right here. Hey there, bud. So we do. Uh. Yes. Good to see you as well. He would like to sing you a song from his people now. Uh. Was there any being in specific that you uh, especially built a relationship with? Oh, yeah. Uh, definitely Donatello. He just has great style. He just shows up in a room, lights up the place. He can rap like a cowboy. It's the disco thing. I really want to see if he's around here somewhere. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it took me at least three years to understand oh. what he... Oh. It's saying, because it all sounds the same. Like, it all sounds exactly the same. Uh -huh. uh. Not now. So I was able to bring my friend Beth with me, who I mentioned at the beginning. She's actually gotten really good at speaking their language to the point where she actually refuses to speak English to me anymore, which is kind of... <laughs>